So as I've mentioned before in other videos, we've finished our last expedition. And the good thing to do is when you come back, obviously rest, recover, but go over your vehicle because it's surprising how many things rattle loose or if something starts leaking. And yes, a lot of you are probably laughing, it's a Land Rover, so that's why, but no, this happens to any piece of kit. It doesn't matter if it's your binoculars, your camera, whatever. It's good to check, check, double check. So here today what we're doing is we're going to be going through and just double checking the spark plug gaps and we're going to be checking the points for the ignition system uh, in the Land Rover 2. The reason being is particularly on these older vehicles is they have a little plastic um, a little plastic block that makes contact with the can inside the distributor and this ends up wearing down after a while. So usually I find after about a thousand k's or so you'll start getting a little miss every probably five to ten kilometers and that's because your point gaps are just slightly out. So we're going to put a new set of points in so Damon's all set up for our next expedition and we're going to show you how to do that today so stay tuned. So, so the motor in this is actually a little bit different. It's not a Rover motor. Um, we're going to do another little video on it. It's a Holden 186, or I guess if you're being a true purist, it's a GMC, General Motor Corporation. So it's a, it's a six cylinder, 3.3 uh, litre. Um, so it's slightly different. In principle, the ignition system is exactly the same. Um, to a rover motor. So we'll take out the spark plugs and we're going to show you how to do the gap for your spark plug and I'm also going to run through what kind of feeler gauge set you need to get. There's a lot of feeler gauge sets out there and some of them are very good, some of them are very bad. So we're going to go through the good, bad and the ugly with regards to that. So I'm taking the oil bath air filter out this just makes it a lot easier, a lot more accessible to actually get into the spark plugs itself. Now, when you do your spark plugs, this sounds really simple and there'll be lots of people going, oh, of course you do that. But if you haven't done it before, you don't know this. So this is something I learned or I was told about before I did it and it's a very good bit of information. When you're changing your spark plugs or your spark plug leads, you always do it one at a time. You never ever take them all off. If you take them all off, then you're gonna forget which one goes where and you're gonna get what happened on our little expedition. And you'll end up getting them all mixed up and your engine will just run horribly. So you do it one at a time. I like to start obviously at the radiator end and then work back to the bulkhead. So this is a six cylinder motor, so we've got six spark plugs to take out. So to take the spark plug out, you, if you're old school, you use a box spanner. If you're a little bit here and there, like I am, you'll use a spark plug socket. Now this actually has a bit of rubber on the inside that fits around the top of the insulator here. If you use a socket, you've got to be very careful. If you get it on the wrong angle, you can smash the china here, the insulator, and then your spark plug's no good. So you do have to be careful. So I just want to push that over it and just push it on till it clicks. And yes, you should disconnect the battery too, but um, I'm just living dangerously today, so. there's the spark plug there. Now it is a bit dirty this spark plug so we can actually tell a little bit from it. If it's white then we know it's been burning too hot. 
it's slightly too lean. The same if it's blue. If it's a bit charred like this, then it's been running a little bit too rich. If we pull it out, and this is a little bit complex, but if it's charred, but we can see that it's wet, then we know it's been burning oil. Now, particularly if you own a 2.6 litre, or you own a 2 litre or 1.6 1. 1. litre, Series 1, Series 2, um, that's a good indicator that your valve guide seals have actually failed and you need to replace them, so you'll have to take your cylinder head off. So, you can actually tell a lot from your spark plug. If you've just bought a vehicle and you're starting to do some K's on the road, some miles, um, it's good to keep your first set and then when it comes to changing them again, um, see if there's a difference in it. And if there isn't, then you know there needs to be an adjustment. It's not just down to the fuel that you've actually been burning. So with these, we're just doing a quick little touch-up today. They, they're not fantastic, but they'll do for now. Um, spark plugs are one of those things that aren't ridiculously expensive, so we'll probably put a new set in before the next trip anyway. Um, but these will work for just puttering around the place at the moment. Now, one of the key tools that you want is one of these and any mechanic worth his salt will have a good set of these. If you don't have a good set of these, then you need to get a good set. And they literally don't break the bank. I bought this set here this morning for, for Damon because he didn't have a set, because he's a, he's a diesel man. And um, it cost, I think, $29 Australian, which is probably, what, 14, 15p, something like that. Nothing, nothing much. Why this is a good set? Why, why is it a good filler gauge set? Well, the problem is nowadays, most vehicles have a tolerance in their spark plugs of around about one to 1.1 mil, I believe. Why do they have a bigger gap than older, older cars? Well, that's got a lot to do with the ignition system itself. The coil that we're running here only amplifies the 12 volts up to 20,000 volts. A new car will run 45,000 volts from the coil through the distributor to the spark plug. So you can obviously have the spark plug gap a lot bigger and because you're running more current the actual electricity or the DC current because it is direct current can actually jump across that gap. If you have less current going through then you need a smaller gap. So when you think about it like that, it does actually make sense. Now, why am I talking about that? Well, most, spark, uh, most feeler gauges that you actually buy will only do down to 0.9 mil. They won't actually go any smaller. And that's not really good. That's not what we're after for a vehicle like this. I think for the two and a quarter litre, it's 0.45 inch or uh, 0.45 mil for the uh, gap for the ignition points, which we'll cover later on on this motor too. So you want a good filler gauge set that's got a good range of blades, so you can get every single gap, every single tolerance that you need for your motor. And not just for your motor, but you'll use this on your transmission too. Um, you can test the end float of the, what is it, the main, I think it's the main cog on the main shaft that actually comes from the gearbox. You'll need to use one of these. So they're a very, very handy bit of tool. Not going to break the bank. There's something, once you get, they always stay the same, provided they don't go rusty. Um, so you'll have it till the day you die. So worthwhile getting a good set. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the spark plug gap. Now, the spark plug gap on this, because it is an older motor, it should be a little bit smaller. So usually I think it's for these, it's about, and we're just guessing here because we're just giving it a rough tune up today. It'll be, uh, I think, 8.85. 8 yep, or 0.8 will do. Usually you've got a, a bit of a tolerance with your spark plugs. So we'll just, I haven't used these gauges before, so I'll just find out where I'm at. Yep, this one here will do. 
So we've got 0.813 of a mil. So that's roughly where we want. We want 0.8 to 0.85. So that, that should do. So how do we set the gap? Well, that's pretty simple, but you have to get it right. So we want to get the gauge. We want to put it in between the gap here in the spark plug, like that. And then we want to run it through, just like that there. Now when we do it, we don't want it to be like that. We don't want it to be like that. We don't want it to be like that or that. We want it to be dead flat. Okay, so it wants to go through like this here. The other thing is when we pull it through, we want it to be nice and tight. Not really tight so you're having to yank it through, but you can pull it through with a little bit of resistance. So this here, I can run it through like that. It's a bit sloppy. So how do we make that gap smaller? Well, we want to be careful, but you could just get it and just tap it. You don't have to go very hard, as you can see. Yeah, it still needs a little bit more, so we'll find something a bit more robust. We'll go off the inlet manifold, like that. Yep. And that's nice and firm. So that spark plug is now set. That's good to go. So as you can see, if I put it in, and I pull it, it's a little bit tight, so we'll just bend it up a bit. That moves through nicely. And you can hear it just grinding a little bit. So that's, that's a set spark plug. And that's how you do it. It's that simple. So, that's the first one. I've got another six to go, so I better get to work. Now, you don't have to do these up stupid tight. Now, stupid tight, I mean, is so tight that Tarzan could actually swing off them. So you don't have to do it like that. You just want it to be so they're nice and firm. Alright, so that's just firm, bit of resistance. Give it a bit of a wiggle, off it comes. Right, so fitted in this car is a point ignition system. Now, for many people this is pretty common, it's rather layman stuff, but nowadays with EFI and um, computer systems that take care of all of the ignition needs of most motors uh, this is something that's actually been forgotten and not a lot of people actually muck around with these anymore what we've got here is we've got the rotor button and there's a shaft that actually goes down into the motor oh, I won't go into all the details but this spins round and rubs on the six tabs that we've got in here, so one for each cylinder, and just dis distributes the power to these cylinders, hence giving the name distributor. Now this rotor button just comes off, like that. On some vehicles it'll have a small hole on the side and it'll have a screw and that'll hold it in place. They're a little bit of a pain I find, but anyway, that's just how they are. Now one thing that a lot of people don't do is put a couple drops of light machining oil in the centre here and that helps to lubricate it, the actual shaft, or the inner workings of it anyway. So that's a good one to do. This here is your condenser, if that packs up you'll have a lot of problems. Here this is your vacuum advance, so that's another one that's good to check out if you're doing a restoration too because the diaphragms can go. So this means if you have no vacuum or your vacuum isn't hooked up to your carburetor then you're going to have to actually increase the revs quite substantially before the car moves forward uh, because it won't be able to um, adjust the ignition uh, correctly for that. So we've got the points here itself. These two little lobes here 
are actually where the contact is made and that's where the electricity is actually passed through. So you can imagine these are going tooth and nail, they're going rat-a-tat-tat -tat all the time. And yes they are hard, hardened steel but even after a while and with the amount of heat that's actually going through them they end up mushrooming over, uh, they end up cracking, they end up glazing and you can get yourself a thread file and actually file them back if you want to. But nowadays, because things are so cheap and we're in a throwaway society, um, you can actually buy a whole set, or I just went and bought a whole point set, for $10 Australian, so about £5. So not, not that expensive. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll take these out, uh, we'll put a new set of points in, and we'll show you how to adjust it for the gap in the points. Holds the points in place. Just take this off here. It's rather tight, but anyway, it's a challenge. Now, the key thing that you don't do is lose the screw in there because that's the back and beyond and when you lose that it's very very hard to get it out so we're going to put that there in a safe place and they're the points now as I spoke to you earlier there's a little plastic block here and this runs on the cam now what do I mean by the cam? Well, I'll just show you over here so there's the shaft, this is the cam. As you can see it's not round, it's got flat edges on it. So what happens is, is as the shaft spins round, the little plastic heel or the block gets pushed out. That opens the points, then once it passes the peak or the edge of this cam, then it closes again. And it opens, closes, open, closes, open, closes. So what happens is after a while, even though this is smooth and it's nice and oily, the plastic slowly wears out. So the gap gets smaller, 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 to the point where it doesn't work at all. So you do have to adjust them after probably the first thousand Ks or so. Um, depends on how good the points are and depends on how lucky you are. But that's that's what I've found anyway. So that's something to look out for. Now to inspect the points, what you can do is you can actually open them. And oh wow. <laughs> okay. So it's a bit hard to see. I'll do the best I can. But as you can see it's cupped. So it's actually worn into the material over time. We've still got a little bit up the top here to play with. We could mess it around for hours trying to file that back down, but we're never going to get it right. So they're the old points, obviously. Let's have a look at the new ones. So these are the new points. Look at that nice and flat on the bottom and the top plenty of material to work with down here and the other one that's pretty much all gone so this is how they should look it's one of those things that you want to check every probably 10,000 k's depending 10,000 k's or what would that be every 6,000 miles that's how I like to do it and I found that works for me um, if you're going off-road though mud water all the rest condensation can build up inside the distributor cap you might want to check them a bit more often but other than that um, generally you don't have too many problems with them but it's something to keep in the back of your mind so we're going to fit these now and hopefully everything goes okay. So 
So we've clipped that in place there. So that's where obviously the arm here pivots from. So we don't want to leave that out. We want to have that clipped in so that'll locate it. Now we want to get it so it's firm, so it's in place. We don't want to do it really tight because we've now got to put the feeler gauges in there or feeler gauge to get the right gap for the points which is 0 uh, 45 should be 0 3 Yep. So 0.457 of a mil. Now this is one of the reasons I like working on Land Rovers is there's plenty of flat panels. Now if you're finding that this is all a bit too difficult, you can actually fit a electronic point ignition system in it, but really I don't think it's worth it. Um, it's worked fine for however many years, so there should be no problem with it. So what we want to do now is we want to open up the points to allow us to get the correct gap. And we want it to be right on the edge of the cam so we can see that it's slightly off. We've just missed it so we need to turn the motor back just a smidge just to get it so it's sitting right on top of the cam there. Put that in, there's a bit of resistance, it's a nice firm gap. 